I've been on quite a journey of late, both inner and outer, and in many ways I'm not sure how to catch you up, or even if I can. But either way, that's okay, as we all have our own unique ways of experiencing the world, and our own authentic ways of seeing things. I think that's why I love the creative medium of video so much as a way to tell our stories in an infinite amount of different ways. Over the past few months I've been away to the wilds of the north of the UK visiting my mum and also my daughter, becoming a grandmother which has been a wonderfully life-changing thing and in the last video I talked about changing my life over a period of three months. Since then I have become really ill for a good few weeks too. The illness took me mentally back to this castle that I visited at the end of the summer and at first I couldn't think why but then I rewound all the footage as is the beauty of video and reflected on some of the creativity and artwork that came out because of it and it turned into not a creative project about an old medieval castle and the fairy stories hidden there but more of a self-portrait project with a deep dive into who I was, am and will become. The older I become, the more I become aware and realise that delving into ourselves, there are always new surprising and hidden layers to be found, or even rediscovered. Some things we already knew but simply forgot about, and once we heal the other parts of ourselves, these hidden parts can once again feel safe enough to re-emerge. This is the hidden treasure of our creative process. And to be honest, whether a painting, sketchbook or in my journal, it doesn't really matter. The only key that matters is the creative part, which can come through anything at all, of course. So as long as we give ourselves the gift of time to nurture our own creative play, in whatever way that might be, we have access to the big questions in life of who we actually are. For me in that sense, painting, drawing, sketching, writing becomes the biggest things I do. I look forward greatly to sharing a whole host of creative fun with my new granddaughter and the joy of observing her own adventures into the land of creativity. Taking turns, not a lesson learned Who'd imagined I would crash and burn you got me there, so I'm declaring a silent war. Can't do it anymore. This is not what I was asking for. But you got me here, then you disappear. Was it always meant to be a dream? No As I wander through these ancient stone halls, I can't help but feel the castle mirrors the inner workings of myself. Each room, each corridor tells a story, some filled with light and others shadowed by mystery. Like this castle, I too am a structure built over time, layer upon layer of experiences, both seen and unseen. The towering walls, strong yet weathered, remind me of my own resilience. They stand tall, guarding secrets within, much like the barriers I sometimes build to protect my heart. The castle's grand windows letting in just enough light reflect the moments I allow my vulnerability to shine through. And yet within these walls there are hidden chambers, quiet spaces, filled with the forgotten memories and untold stories. Yeah. 
it's here in the quiet corners that I find inspiration. Just as this castle holds centuries of history, my mind holds layers of thought waiting to be explored. The best place I've learnt to do this is within my journal and creativity. And this place, much like my own inner world, is both a fortress and a sanctuary. A reminder that within me there is strength, there is mystery, and there is beauty waiting to be uncovered. And along came June. I truly believe in the power of creativity, and that we're not just meant to create for fun and joy, that it actually serves a purpose. I believe as humans, however we choose to create, and for me that's usually a pen or a pencil or a paintbrush, we can begin to unlock the hidden chambers, turning the stone walls into flowing ink and transforming the castle's history into our own creative journey. In this sense, it's more than just a place. It's a reflection of the inner self, one that I continue to build, discover and embrace. In this shady bit, it's pretty cool. We are in different Whenever I am up to find the sunset, a flavor of a memory. Whenever all the stars above are shining. So now we've got them loosely drawn out, I might start blocking a few bits and bobs in. So for example, I just grab my laptop here and I'll just pop it here. You can see obviously the bonnet is black, the waistcoat is black, there's light behind her. So I might start blocking in some of the, you know, the main areas with lights and darks. And as I say, that this side, I kind of want to have as more of a silhouette and then this more detailed. And I also want to think about the journaling I'm going to put in. So I think blocking and journaling is next. Yes, for me anyway, yes. Little tip as well, when you're doing something, you know, creative pages and you want to do some journaling as well, I think it's really useful to put the journaling in at least as early as possible. I mean, we, we did add more journaling over the top layers, which is fine. But I think if you start working on the artwork and you get really engrossed and kind of quite detailed and you invest your time into it, I think it can feel a little bit more intimidating, shall we say, to put the, the text on. So if it's your intention to do, you know, a kind of more fine art piece and it's more about the artwork than the journaling, that's absolutely fine. Don't feel you have to put the journaling in. But if you do want to have a piece, you know, with some writing on, put it in sooner rather than later. Even if you're going to cover it up with later layers and then you can reassert it over the top, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's just, that's just what I do, I think, when I'm, you know, so I don't become too invested. And then you, be, then you get really precious 
And we don't want that. We don't want that, especially with journaling, of course. Just a feeling of a distant melody unknown I was doing fine I minded my own business Till the day you took me home You came into my life Like a sweet embrace Swept me off my feet And made me whole again I've seen out of Studio Ghibli, Spirited Away. Oh yeah. Running past all the flowers. This is it. It's very romantic, yes. Do you want to throw something down? I don't know if I do. No, seriously, I don't know if I do. It feels like we shouldn't be here. Oh. What does it say? An ancient well sits on a natural spring and from the stoneworks believe it date back to the 13th century. Look closely at the stonework and you can see two different styles. The upper section is a later addition in keeping with the picturesque movement. The entrance and low wall opposite was an add-on from the early 1900s. The old ironwork to hang gate still remains. If these old walls could talk, they could tell a fascinating history. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. 
So recently I've been on this journey that I never expected, a journey within myself. Illness has a way of slowing you down, forcing you to stop and reflect. It can strip away the distractions of everyday life and leave you face to face with your own thoughts, your own fears, your own truth. At first I tried to resist it, I wanted to keep moving, to stay busy, to ignore the signals my body was sending. But eventually I had no choice but to surrender. And as I lay in the stillness, I realised that this wasn't just a physical struggle, it was an emotional and mental one too. This way an illness can become a mirror, showing parts of ourselves that we avoid for too long. And so while I was wandering through the ancient castle, moving through the shadowy halls and hidden chambers, some filled with fear and others with strength, I rediscovered parts of me I hadn't visited in years, and some of it I wasn't sure I was ready to face. But being so unwell has a way of making you confront those dark corners, the places that you'd rather keep locked away. And you may have seen in previous videos in recent months, I have been clearing out my dusty corners and physical spaces. But here was a different thing. In that stillness, I found something unexpected. As I explored the inner spaces, I started to see not just the struggles, but also the resilience, the strength I didn't know I had, the light that was still in there, even in those darkest moments. Coming out the other side, in between the dark hallways and the dusty corners, I found some lighter spaces and that's when I turned to art, and art journaling became my way of mapping out this inner journey. Each stroke of a pencil or brush was a step deeper and closer into understanding myself, my pain and my necessary healing. 
having a fever allowed me to burn things away and express the things to myself that I couldn't put into words. Frustrations, hopes, moments of clarity. I was going on. My artwork and my journal often becomes my place of release, my safe place, my therapy, my way of rebuilding after being broken down. And so in creating these pages, I began to realize that the journey wasn't just about recovery, it was about rediscovery. Illness took me inward, and in that quiet, often uncomfortable space, I found parts of myself I had lost along the way. These important lost and almost forgotten parts are the things that make me strong, that make me feel whole. Every month I post a new art journaling video and prompts in our lovely Patreon community, so feel free to check out the Pockets £5 tier for my catalogue of art journaling tutorials. I always leave my links in the description below. You know, it said some bridge was up there. Mm-hmm. Gloppy. I bet we could have gone over the Gloppy Bridge and walked down this way. Yeah. Without getting wet feet. Look at that row of cottage over yeah, there. We've just been in the moat, haven't we? Scratch feet. <laughs> they locked the gate, so we decided to go in the moat to try and get through into the where we need to be. I couldn't do it.
years ago by George Found Lutterell. But they can live up to three and a half thousand years, so actually it's a baby. Look at Simon. Please. Of course, we are all a work in progress, so this journey is far from over. But with each page I complete, each representing a moment of reflection, I gain deeper clarity and learn new lessons about myself. I think my greatest takeaway and lesson from this is that transforming yourself doesn't come from trying to fix all the broken parts, as there will always be more and deeper layers of healing to do. I think you truly change your life when you commit to regularly working on intentional steps towards inner growth and also letting go of any self-sabotaging that we have it into to help make ourselves feel falsely safe. The more we learn about ourselves, the more we can align our day-to-day -day thoughts and actions with our most authentic desires. In other words, we move into living the lives that we truly want to live. Made me whole again. You came in my life. 